here are the contents that I am going to cover in this topic. So let's start about it. So actually, <coughs> uh, nations across the world face the challenge of increasing power production while reducing the carbon footprint at the same time. So they need to minimize the power loss and so on. So that for doing that they face different types of challenges and they consider the solution as smart grids. It brings improvements in cost and performance but the security of the smart grid becomes complex and risky and it is a topic of being concerned. So actually what is smart grid? Uh, it uses digital technology to improve reliability, security and efficiency of electric system. So in short we can say that it is the combination of power grid and some ICT technology. So it is a two-way communication system. It enables real-time monitoring and control. It enables cost reduction and efficiency improvement. Uh, this is a conceptual model of smart grid. It consists of four layers. The first one it is the software layer. The second one it is integration platform. The third one is communication layer. And the fourth one is physical layer. So, uh, what does the IT technology, how it can make the smart grid more smarter? It can add some real-time monitoring like PMU and smart meters. Uh, it can add advanced information analysis for peak data. It can also automate the controlling system which can cell filling and smart accurators. So, uh, the cyber security in smart grid, um, it uh, consists of like three stages. It affects the availability of the smart grid system. Uh, it can be some malicious software, these are malware attacks which can risk the smart grid uh, and the attacker can access the system without using the password of authorized user. These are some concerns. So what are the security requirements? Uh, accessing the information in a timely in the smart grid so it is considered as the availability the integrity it is uh, preventing unauthorized modification of information by different users and what is the confidentiality it is preventing unauthorized users from accessing the information in order to protect different uh, privacy and safety so here is a diagram about it which shows that it is divided into three stages. So uh, the connectivity. So in this case the attacker leads to different types of physical damage to the grid or blackouts and lack of efficiency. Those uh, can be considered as connectivity issue. The trust, some customers will not actually uh, follow the policies and agreements, so it can be considered as a challenge. And customers' privacy, it is also an important thing. Ensuring customers' privacy in any system, including the smart grid, it is very important. It is a security challenge and software vulnerabilities. What is it? It is uh, that software suffers from a wide 
variety of vulnerabilities. For example, different malware attacks in the software. So it is also a challenge. So uh, to consider the solution to those challenges, uh, it is a critical issue that attracts the attention of researchers uh, that how can the, those challenges be overcome. So while some uh, solutions were proposed against those challenges mentioned earlier, so we will know about those. So the first one is the network security. It can be a solution. It is uh, DOS is the most common attack in the smart grid network. So the smart grid system must detect those DOS attacks as they happen in order to apply appropriate counter meters. So to detect the DOS, there are some methods like using flow entropy, using signal strength, using sensing time measurement, using transmission failure count, using signatures. Smart grid system should also be able to take appropriate actions with a short period once do a DOS attack has been detected in order to protect the nodes. The next one is data security. It is another level of securing a smart grid network by providing data protection and object authentication. So cryptography methods and algorithms are used to encrypt data in order to maintain a secure communication. And the users uh, should uh, must authenticate to prevent attacks against data integrity. So uh, for multicast applications, uh, some methods can be applied. The first one is secret info asymmetry. In this case, each transmitter uses a different key to authenticate itself at each receiver. The second one is time asymmetry. The transmitter first sends the message, then creates a temporary authentication key. The third one is hybrid asymmetry. In this method, both secret info asymmetry and time asymmetry, which is mentioned uh, before, it can create different temporary keys for every transmission. The third one is key management. So there can be two types of key management. The first one is public key infrastructure. The second one is symmetric key management. So in the public uh, infrastructure, it ensures security by verifying the true identity of the party. And the second one, the symmetric key management, in, it, in this, the advantage of man, symmetric key management over the PK is speed and efficiency. It is more, much more faster than the public infrastructure. And the last one, uh, which is network security protocol. Well, it, it is designed to secure the network and plays an important role in smart grid. Uh, some of the existing smart grid system use internet based protocols like IPSC, TLS, thus. So uh, here is a proposed model in the smart grid. So the layers can be divided uh, into uh, different IPs like for mobile devices we can use separate IPs for substitution and smart grid we can use separate IPs for home services we can use separate IPs so thus it can be more efficient and solve the pro cyber security problems in the smart grid system so another uh, solution can be applied as using secure DP, DNP3 and the IEC 61850 or IEC 62351. So what are those? The DNP3, it is currently 
used for both intersubstation and intersubstation communications in the system. So it was originally designed without any security mechanism. Since it is not any practical to upgrade all power systems into new ones. So it can be handy to handle those scenarios. And the IEC3, it, it is an authentication and encryption layer above the TCP and IP layer. So this layer can enforce TLS to use symmetric cryptography and MSCs for message confidentiality. <coughs> so, thus, it has uh, the smart grid. It has numerous of benefits like uh, the advantages. It can use lower cost and it can be used uh, to innovate much more technologies in the future also. It can improve reliability. Uh, the ICT, they are very successful in implementing such system. Uh, so the cyber security is still under research and needs more of investigation to ma manage to maintain from different threats. Uh, it can uh, additionally security requirements it can add to build more powerful uh, system in the grid. So that was all from me. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much.